and getting your feedback on on what needs to be um, how's it different this time um, and to what extent are the challenges and opportunities facing government in 2020 new there's a, an awkward <laughs> an interesting question to kick off with so if i could ask you first francis your reflections on uh, the last 12 months and what's different for our government going forward well i mean everything's different i mean it's um the world the world has changed the world won't be the same again and we won't um we won't know how it's different until we start getting used to it i mean um, I am um, uh, our business where we work with uh, for overseas governments on um, helping them to implement difficult reforms. Um, you know, all our work is by definition international. Um, and our um, the way we work is we embed a team with the government we're working for. You know, in March that came to an end, um, but um, we found it actually it's completely possible to carry on working with the existing clients and indeed have started work with two additional clients without ever having been, without the team who are working on the assignments ever having been there. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, and we were just thinking because the vaccine's coming and things are opening up and life may begin to return to normal for a business like us, what, what is the new normal? I mean, do, do we need to work in the same, in, in the way we, we used to with the inefficiencies? There certainly are, you need to have some of it because of the human contact and, and all of that. But do we need to have people uh, based there all of the time in the way that we have done? So, you know, it's, 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 it's going to be very different. I mean, uh, how, is, how is, in terms of kind of digital transformation, Mm. Um, it's been a challenging time because there have been extraordinary demands being being made. Um, and every government has had to, you know, in, if you look at what the revenue HMRC has had to do here in the UK, they've had to effectively reverse the turbines. I mean, a, a machine which has been used to sucking money in has had to be turned around to push money out and actually done it extraordinarily well. And so things have had to be done quickly. Um, uh, I mean, the question is, there is the risk appetite uh, changed? I mean, people have had to do things in, in riskier ways. Um, they've had to do procurements really quickly for PPE. Um, and, you know, and then all the work on vaccine development and testing and, and all of that. And it hasn't all been, hasn't all been perfect. And how could it possibly be? And now there's, you know, massive kind of inquiries going on, looking for scapegoats, people to blame for money will have been wasted for sure it will i mean if in, in a perfect world this could have no doubt have been done better but this was a far from perfect world and governments had to yeah. uh, react quickly no and, and i'm just picking up that hmrc point yeah hmrc having to go from taking to giving that there's an interesting shift in mindset within the uh, within the organization sam mm -hmm. um your thoughts around um you know what are we looking at 2021 and forwards yeah, I, I do agree with um, with Francis, and I think also what's interesting for me, I suppose, is the the comment, Katrine, that you made around the, the exploiting the foundation. You know, I've had a number of conversations with particularly government technology leaders who feel very vindicated having having put those sorts of foundations in place, and maybe not necessarily have got the opportunity to exercise them as fully as they would have imagined or hoped. Um, certainly a crisis is not, is not the one that you, you, you hope will be the thing that pulls, pulls you together and that uh, you can sort of display your best, I suppose. But having said that, that's what people have done. You know, that they have stepped up. Um, you know, again, Katrin, your example of just accelerating those changes. And I think, again, Francis, your comments earlier, you know, if it wasn't for the GDS and some of those things that were in place, even, yeah. even coming to the notion that, you know, maybe the HR... The, uh, Her Majesty's um, revenue uh, service might actually sort of turn around and do something different um, is is quite fascinating. So I think there is a yes and no in, in this. You know, is it different? Yes, it is in terms of the particular technological, social, and diplomatic conditions that we find ourselves in are, are different. But you know, I, I gave a talk recently where if you just look back to 1920. You could argue that again, you know, we were in a period of technological change. You know, the, the affordable automobile, the advent of radio and telephone connectivity, um, you know, was sweeping around. 
electrification of homes indeed, right? So that was, that was a bunch of stuff. And we had production line manufacturing occurring, um, you know, in that part of the industrial revolution that has a lot of analogies, uh, if you like, to the sorts of forces that we're dealing with and therefore the government has to, has to respond to uh, in kind. Excellent. And Katrina, Including a sorry. pandemic, actually. Uh, yeah, it did. Right. Yes, <laughs> quite, right, quite right. Katrine, your thoughts? Well, thank you, David. Um, I, I think I, I will have to agree with the, both Lord Francis and, and, and Sam that everything is different and yet some things uh, stay the same. So it has elements of, of, of both, I think. Acceleration for sure. We had to accelerate everything we did, um, but it, it does. Uh, and it's different because it's an all-encompassing crisis. It's, I mean, it's a it's health crisis. It's a, an economic crisis. It affects our lives, our social lives, our cultural lives, everything. Um, and in that sense, it puts a spotlight on on our fundamentals, which was what I was trying the point I was trying to make. It, that if you have the fundamentals in place, you're able to accelerate uh, and and get things done. Uh, of course, with uh, with uh, another notion of of, um, of risk taking and and another uh, acceptance of, of of some failures, but that might change later on. Um, and then, I think two points that were different then it was that the cooperation, the scale of cooperation between uh, different authorities was just, it accelerated, but it was also a, a, both a question of, of cooperation on, on the decision-making, so the co-designing, uh, co but also the co-production, that the execution together, it had to be done uh, together. We had to share data, we had to share employees, we had to share, um, uh, I mean, I, I borrowed a lot of em employees from other agencies to do tasks that were not related to their normal job. And, uh, and, and so that, that mix, um, I really, that's something I hope won't stifle once we're out of the, the cri crisis that we've actually learned to, um, to cooperate in a more agile and, uh, way. Um, and the other thing is that you really need to get your data right. I mean, you have to know your data because in order to foresee something in mm -hmm. an unforeseeable uh, crisis, you need a, a data. And I think that's the next step that we will see also in, in, in general, that um, we need to know our data. Yeah, and I think certainly um, data does seem to be something that, that is uh, you know, becoming more and more prominent around get this stuff right, get this stuff accurate and get this stuff quickly. Um, is certainly something that's coming through. I'm, I'm seeing very powerfully and, and particularly interesting what you're just mentioning there about that collaboration across agencies, because we've seen that not just, I think, across government agencies, but I think, you know, what we've seen from community coming forward over the last 12 months has been absolutely breathtaking in terms of, of people re reintroducing themselves to their local communities, which is very good. I mean, one of the, one of the points I think people have, have recognised is government's risk appetite through necessity has changed. I think, that, I think it's fair to say in an extreme circumstance like this drives it. But the question really is, is, is it permanent? So, Francis, what are your thoughts around that? Well, I think uh, uh, it's the most difficult thing um, to, uh, when I used to, w w was a minister and I used to occasionally say civil service is, is very risk averse. And sometimes people push back and say that's because ministers are risk averse. And I respond, well, you've got to be kidding. I mean, ministers mm -hmm. in our system, where they're all elected or nearly all elected politicians, uh, they belong to one of the riskiest occupations there is, um, where you can be thrown out of your job at a moment's notice. Um, every aspect of your life is regarded as public property. This is not something that risk averse people do. Um, and um, uh, and I think uh, the culture in our civil, I mean, we have, a, we have fantastic civil servants in, in the UK, but um, I, I have been very critical of the civil service as an institution. And I think it is very innovation averse. No one loses their job. No one's career is harmed because they preside over an inefficient status quo. But try something new that doesn't work and it can really uh, throw you out. Uh, and, um, you know, what's the Google mantra? Fail small, fail fast, try new things all the time. We know that, you know, great organizations learn at least as much from the things they try that don't work as they do from the things that do work. And, you know, these days there's no steady state management. There's no business as usual. Any organization is either getting better or it's getting worse. And, and 
if you're not trying new things, then you're you're certainly. Um... Click the link in the description to watch the full version of this panel session. All panel sessions from GovEc Digital 2020 are free to public sector executives.